welcome back students to the part 4 of today's session in this module we'll be learning about dimensional analysis the expression showing the powers to which the fundamental units are to be raised to obtain one unit of a derived quantity is called the dimensional formula of that quantity if q is the unit of a derived quantity represented by q is equal to m raised to a l raised to b t raised to c then m raised to a l raised to b t raised to c is called the dimensional formula and the exponents a b and c are called the dimensions in solving problems in physics there is a usual and powerful procedure called dimensional analysis it makes use of the fact that dimensions can be treated as algebraic quantities quantities can be added or subtracted only if they have the same dimensions furthermore the terms on both sides of an equation must have the same dimensions dimensional analysis is the practice of checking relations between physical quantities by identifying the dimensions of the physical quantities these dimensions are independent of the numerical multiples and constants and all the quantities in the world can be expressed as a function of the fundamental dimensions now let us discuss the advantages or applications of dimensional analysis dimensional equations are used to validate the correctness of a physical equation also these are used to derive correct relationship between different physical quantities in any correct equation representing the relation between physical quantities the dimensions of all the terms must be the same on both sides terms separated by plus or minus must have the same dimensions and this is known as the principle of homogeneity of dimensions now let us see an example as an application of dimensional analysis checking the correctness of the given equation you all are familiar with the equation of motion v equal to u plus at according to dimensional analysis dimension of v must be equivalent to dimension of u which must be equivalent to dimension of at here v and u are the velocities a is the acceleration and t is the time so we as we have discussed dimension of v is l t raised to minus 1 similarly the dimension of u is also l t raised to minus 1 the dimension of at is dimension of a into dimension of t which is l t raised to minus 2 into t which is again l t raised to minus 1 since dimension of v is equal to dimension of u is equal to dimension of at we can say that this equation is dimensionally correct you can check this principle for the other two equations of motion also the same is being repeated for the equation of motion s is equal to ut plus half at square here you can see that the dimension of s is equal to the dimension of ut is equal to the dimension of half at square since dimension of s is equal to dimension of ut is equal to dimension of half at square we can say this equation is dimensionally correct
Now coming to the second application that is deriving relationship between various physical quantities. Let us take an example. The time period T of a simple pendulum is observed to depend on the following factors. Length of the pendulum L, mass of the bob M and acceleration due to gravity G. Now let us derive a relationship between T, L, M and G using the principle of dimensions. So let T be the time period. Then we can write T must be proportional to M raised to A, L raised to B, G raised to C. M, L and G are the factors on which time period depends. We are just raising it to some powers like A, B and C. Removing the proportionality sign, you can write T is equivalent to a constant K into M raised to A, L raised to B, G raised to C. According to the principle of homogeneity of dimensions, dimension of T must be equivalent to the dimension of M raised to A into dimension of L raised to B into dimension of G raised to C. So the dimension of T is capital T. Dimension of M is capital M. Dimension of L is capital L. Dimension of G is LT raised to minus 2. So we can write T is equivalent to K into capital M raised to A, capital L raised to B, LT raised to minus 2 raised to C. Combining the dimensions of M, L and T, we get the RHS to be M raised to A, L raised to B into L raised to C, which is L raised to B plus C, and T raised to minus 2 into C, which is equivalent to T raised to minus 2C. The powers of M, L and T on both sides of the equation, that is the dimensions on both sides of the equation must be the same. So equating the powers, you will get A is equivalent to 0, B is equivalent to half and C is equivalent to minus half. Substituting in our original equation, you will get T is equivalent to K into M raised to 0, L raised to half, G raised to minus half. Or T is equivalent to a constant into square root of L by G. Here the constant K is experimentally found out to be 2 pi. But there are some limitations for this method of dimensional analysis. Dimensionless quantities cannot be determined by this method. And constant of proportionality cannot be determined by this method. They can be found either by experiment or by theory. And this method is not applicable to trigonometric, logarithmic and exponential functions. In the case of physical quantities, which are dependent upon more than three physical quantities, this method will be very difficult. Hope you have understood about dimensional analysis. Thank you dear students.